Hi, this is Melly Kay, and it's Tuesday, June 29th, 2021. And the subject of this video is when drought comes to the Oroville Dam. The Oroville Dam is the tallest dam in the United States, and its reservoir is the second largest in California. It's located in Butte County, California, USA. And if you've been listening to the news lately, you may have heard that the Edward Hyatt power plant at the Oroville Dam may have to be shut down due to not enough water to power the turbines for the first time since the dam was constructed in the 1960s. The reason for this is that the hydroelectric power plant can't operate if the water is less than 640 feet in elevation. At the time I'm making this video, the elevation of the water is about 685 feet. So about 45 feet to go regarding the possible Hyatt shutdown. And according to the stats that I looked at uh, for the last couple of weeks, the reservoir level is dropping at an average of about a foot per day. And this is a drawing of the intake structures for the power plant. And since they play such a critical role in the functioning of the Hyatt power plant, I want to do a bit of a deep dive, no pun intended, on their place in the system. So here's a full shot that shows the two intakes and how they sit in relation to the dam. So this DWR photo was taken in February of this year when the reservoir level was about 701 feet or 16 feet higher than today's level. So as in looking at this photo, over here is the dam and here are the two intake structures. I'll zero in on it a little bit. So water comes through these intakes and into the two penstocks that feed the turbines. The power plant is under the dam, deep below the dam. And after the water goes through the turbines, it goes out to the diversion pool section of the Feather River that's down, it's on the other side of this dam. It's downstream of, of the dam. And here's another photo. It was taken on the same day as the previous one. And this gives a really good view of the intakes, at the bottom anyway, and how you can see all the, the water marks on the terrain around the reservoir. Next is a photo from December of 2020. And the, the level was about the same as the previous photos. It was about 703 feet in elevation in this photo. And this, this shows the entire intake structure, including the equipment building up here at the top. And these trash racks cover the intakes to keep out the debris. And inside, there's a system of uh, adjustable shutters that can be moved to allow water to come in from various levels of the reservoir. And the reason for that is really to put it very simply, DWR needs colder water for the fish and warmer water for the farmers because they're mandated to supply that water uh, for the fish and for the water districts and farmers. And here's a photo. This is from 1967. I really love this photo. It shows the intake structures uh, as they're being constructed. And you can see they've put the trash racks over part of it at this point. And then up here is the equipment building. So 1967. And then This is a drawing showing the inside of one of the intake structures. They're 650 feet long, and they sit on the side of the reservoir at an angle of 
27 or 28 degrees. And you can see these shutters that allow the water to come in at various levels. The water comes in and then goes through a, a gate, uh, an intake gate and goes to the penstocks. Each of the shutter, each of the um, intakes has a penstock and they're, those penstocks are 22 feet in diameter. So the water goes uh, from the penstocks and then on to the turbines. I'll show you that in the next drawing. So remember the, the minimum power pool of the Edward Hyatt power plant is 640 feet of, of elevation. And this is a drawing showing the, the two pin stocks here, well, the two intakes here that feed those two 22 foot diameter pin stocks. The pin stocks feed the turbines. This would be the Edward Hyatt power house and these pin stocks are feeding lines that go to each of the turbines. And then the water exits through the diversion tunnels. These two tunnels right here, tunnels number one and two, those diversion tunnels were put in at the beginning of construction of the dam to divert water around the construction site. And the tunnels are huge. They're 35 feet in diameter and concrete lined and 4,400 feet in, in length. And after the dam was finished, you can see there's, there's plugs here. They plugged up these diversion tunnels. And diversion tunnel number two, that plug has a, a, a valve system in it water can still go through and it's called the river valve outlet system so that's in this top tunnel diversion tunnel number two and so water comes in there and it exits through the uh, diversion tunnels as well so these tunnels have become the tail race tunnels for the turbines and the outflow for the river valve outlet system And this next photo is a really good view from 1977. This was taken in 1977. And you can see the intakes over here. And this lets you see how the water comes from the reservoir through the intakes and then down under the dam through the powerhouse and then through the diversion tunnels which empty out right here these are the portals for the exit for the diversion tunnels and this is the thermalito diversion pool which is the what they call that section of the feather river because they dammed up the feather river when they built the dam so this is the thermalito diversion pool so I think that's a good photo. And next, I wanted to show you this. Also from 1977, it's when the power plant nearly had to shut down, but it didn't. And one of the typical news phrases right now is that the water level in the Oroville Reservoir is getting lower than it's been in four decades. So that's what they're talking about is the drought of 1977, over four decades ago. And you can see the water is just barely lapping at the bottom of those intakes. So it's almost to that critical point where they would have had to shut the powerhouse down. Now let's go look at the CDEC, California Data Exchange Center, hourly data. 
And here you can see this was taken this morning at 8 o'clock of the day I made this video on June 29th. And the elevation of the reservoir, you can see, is 684, almost 685 feet. This is how much water's left in there, over a million acre feet. Outflows right now are almost 6,000 cubic feet per second. And that's up a little bit. It had been running about 55, 5,600. Um, it, it goes up and down, but it's, it's in about in the 5,000 and uh, more than, more than 5,500 range right now. Here's the inflows. And those fluctuate, but they've been running pretty consistent in their fluctuation over the time that I've been watching. And some of these negatives are from adjustments of the, the figures, but you can get an idea that inflows are pretty low right now. And then river releases. They've gone up from even a couple of days ago they had been running very consistently at about 2,700 cubic feet per second. So I don't know why they upped it by 300, but they have to do a lot of uh, adjusting and there's just a lot going on at the Oroville the Thermolito complex. So if you consider these outflows it's probably a couple of turbines is my best guess. All of the turbines together can output about 17,000 cubic feet per second. And so we know that this is more than one turbine. And remember there's two issues. There's the possible shutdown of the power plant that happens when this level gets to 640 over here in elevation. And then when that would occur, there it doesn't mean they can't get water out because they have that river valve outlet system. It can uh, bring water in from the lower levels below 640 feet. So it can continue to put water out to the tune of about, well, I think it's maximum design capacity is about 5,400 cubic feet per second, but I don't know how close they can get to that, but usually they'll just call it about 5,000 cubic feet per second capability of the river valve outlet system. So keeping in mind that if they did have to shut the power plant down. That's one issue. So there would have to be an alternative power source or whatever their plan B is. And then um, there's the need to keep the Feather River viable. So the river valve outlet system, if it's functioning properly and there's no reason to think that it isn't or wouldn't be, can keep the Feather River alive because it can put out close to what's coming out of there now. And like I say, I don't know what makes up this figure of outflows, but it's um, more than one turbine can do. So I'm guessing two turbines. And so the river valve outlet system can buy more time for some inflows to come in to, to increase and um, it can buy more time because at this rate with the elevation dropping at a foot per day considering this is the end of june you're looking at the middle of august if it keeps up that same rate and that would be when the power plant would shut down and then the river valve outlet system would continue to draw water out and um, that would bring us into fall so I don't know what the picture would be like then, but those are just some of the factors. And remember, river releases, 
are not the same as outflows. They can send water out into the system, but not release it into the river. There's two places that they release water into the river. At the diversion dam, the water goes out into the Feather River from the Thermolito Diversion Pool, or it can be diverted over through the Power Canal and the Fore Bay and then onto the After Bay. And there's a river uh, release there as well. So there's two places. The After Bay releases it into the high flow channel, the regular Feather River. And at the diversion dam, it goes into that low flow channel. So they can hold water in, and, and they also have to provide water to uh, water districts and farmers off of that uh, after bay. So it is quite a balancing act that they do there. So with that, I will conclude this video. Let's go back. And I just wanted to say that I hope you will like, subscribe, and share this video. And I want to thank all of my subscribers and viewers for your loyalty over the past four and a half years. I appreciate so much that um, many of you stopped by and wished me well during the pandemic and at holidays. And I really appreciate that. I'll be keeping an eye on the dam and um, I'll post statistics and other relevant information on the community tab between videos. So thanks again and I'll see you later. <laughs>